Hello and welcome. My name's David and in this video we're going to take a look at creating a realistic pencil sketch effect. Now I've got my stock tab open. If yours isn't already open, head up to view, down to studio and from the flyout menu select stock. Now I'm using pexels. The search criteria I'm using is portrait. The image I'm going to use is this one here. But before we bring it in, we need to create a document to put it on. Now looking at this, I think a square format would really suit it. So I've headed up to file, to new, command N, control N is the shortcut. We're on photo and I wanted it to be a square format. This is the one I selected, but it's not a square, I know it's a 10 by 8. But all I did then was just come to the page height, just change that 8 to a 10, left it at 300 dpi, that's exactly what we want, and I clicked on create. Incidentally, if you're more comfortable using millimeters, centimeters, you can do it from the flyout menu here. Right, I'm going to click cancel because I've already got it. Heading over to this guy, picking him up, dragging him over, placing him in the center of our canvas. There will do nicely when he arrives. There's the photographer. Don't forget to stop by and say thanks to him. That's the document size of the image. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. So I'm going to press V on the keyboard. That gives me the move tool. Clicking down. Just look at there. Oh, that green line. That shows it's in the center. Just going to take it so his hat is just below the top. And that's what I meant. I think the square format really does suit it. Now we've got quite a bit hanging over the top, the bottom, little bits on the side. We can trim that by right clicking and coming down to rasterize and trim. You'll notice the way that move tool now jumps in. The next thing we need to do is we need to desaturate. We need to make it into a black and white. Head into the adjustment tab. HSL is going to be the easiest way and saturation shift all the way to the left minus 100. Let's click to accept. Next, we're going to combine these two layers into one new layer. Bring your cursor over the top layer. Make sure it's live. Now right click and go down to merge visible. There is our new layer. Right. I'm just going to press H on the keyboard to give me back the hand tool. Now with this layer, we're going to invert it. In other words, we're going to turn it into a negative. Press, hold down, command, control. Now press the letter I on the keyboard. Heading up to the blend modes, we're going to change it from normal. We're going to go down to color dodge. Now to bring it back, we're going to head down to either this little icon here for live filter, or you can go up to layer, new live filter layer, we're going to use a blur. It's worth trying any of these, see what uh, effects they have. But the one I've selected is this one, minimum blur. Let's just lift it up. Right, now moving the radius across, we're going to bring it back. Incidentally, if with this one, you can see little faint traces of the image. If you've got slightly heavier ones, darker lines showing on yours, don't worry about it. Just do the same process. Just bring it through two, three, Four, but there, I think it just popped in and four. Yes, that will do. Okay, pressing command plus or control plus, that's command plus control plus to zoom in. Like the effect, it's a little bit on the heavy side in some areas. We're going to come to the opacity slider, just going to drop it down, taking it down into this sort of region here. There, what have we got? We've got 41%. Right, using command zero, control zero, let's go back to fit on screen. Fair bit of background clutter, and I want to reduce some of this, what I call background shading. Now to do that, we're going to head up, first of all, to brushes. I've got my basic brushes. I'm going to scroll right the way down. My favorite brushes, even though we've got soft brushes here, I prefer to use these. These are the round light brushes. We're going to select this one. Still got the hand tool, but if I press B on the keyboard, there's that brush. Okay, next, heading up to color. Make sure that you've got black and white. Now, I've got black as a foreground color. We're going to click on the mask, and there you can see a preview, the way we can remove that. We got the opacity 100%, flow is 25%, hardness is 0%. Just going to take this up. Let's go over, let's start removing these bits and pieces here, just clicking down a couple of times just to get rid of them. Very careful with this, don't get too close to the hat. Don't forget with this soft brush, it tends to be a little bit of a feather out. 
just going over that by that I mean it reaches further than it looks right just coming around the bottom part like this over the shoulder down round just taking a little bit of that shade in while we're on the bottom let's just go across like this I don't want it to be on the bottom of the page so just lifting it up that will do over that shoulder there and round here or ear depending right over we go into this area nearly back at the top and there I'll just quickly finish this off but uh, yes I know you'll do a much better job right now that we've done this I'm going to use spacebar I'm going to use command or control I'm going to bring my cursor to this position clicking down at zoom right in there's the brush let's drop it down in size left hand square bracket will drop it down in size you get a preview really like the way this preview works you can see exactly how it's going to look now I think 100% is way too much I'm going to press 5 on the keyboard this is my favorite way by pressing 5 on the keyboard you take it straight to 50% I just think that's a great way of working it's much quicker much easier than using the slider just going over that once yeah that looks good round like this and just removing what I call that background shading I just want a little bit of it I don't want too much if we come over this area here just going round like that that looks pretty good like that over the nose over this eye dropping the size of the brush down again left hand square bracket will do that over the eyebrow just want to get rid of the darker tones so round we go down around this cheek onto his chin I want to take a lot of this out I'm not too keen on that at all and I'm going to drop it down we've got 50% opacity let's drop it down to 30 I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard that's better just taking that down gives me a couple of chances to go over it over that darker area of his moustache wasn't too keen on that over that cigarette let's just take that down don't want that being too dark the dark lines tend to distract from it so around we go like this just taking that down a little bit further right okay next we're going to start drawing dropping the size of the brush right the way down to this sort of area here very small brush now pressing x on the keyboard that's going to put white as a foreground color and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming over some of these lines that we've just taken down a little bit too much. Pressing 5 on the keyboard will take us back to 50%. That might be just a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm going to continue to trace over some of these character lines. Uh, don't forget we're using white as a foreground color. That's removing the mask, revealing those lines. You may have noticed I've also speeded up the video just to make things a little bit faster. After all, I don't want you getting bored. So I'm going to continue with this just a little bit longer around this area here. And there we are. That should do nicely. Right, while I'm at it, it's just a little bit dark on some areas. So I'm going to press X on the keyboard. I'm going to leave the opacity as it is, just taking those dark lines down. What tends to happen is those dark lines are going to draw your attention so um, no pun intended so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the dark lines down a little bit just coming around there that looks much better and this shirt love the shading on the shirt I think that's done an absolutely terrific job round here so just removing that just making that a little bit lighter so it doesn't grab your attention too much and then up along this one like that keeping the brush very small like this otherwise it tends to come out and you remove start of the sh start of the, some of the shading that you've got there as well it's the concentration and round we come into this area right very quickly with the hat taking the size of the brush right the way up I'm going to just hold down my right hand square bracket I'm going to come into this area here round the outside of the brim I just want a little bit of a trace of the hat space box over to the other side just removing that sort of photographic effect again just a little bit of a, a trace of that dropping the size of the brush down left hand square bracket over the brim hair there just 
there, taking that down a touch or two over this region. Well, you can see where I am, and then up again. I don't. This pattern is far too photographic, so just removing that down a touch or two. There, that will do nicely. He says, cleaning up a bit more of the background. Command zero, control zero to go to fit on screen. There is our sketch effect going over here a few times. In fact, press zero takes you back to 100% just to make sure you filled in. Right, you might want to leave it. You might think, right, that looks pretty good. Let's leave it like that. But the more I looked at it, the more I felt it was perhaps just a little bit too stark on that white background. Then I thought, how about some paper? Headed back to my stock tab, did a search on Upsplash for paper, and I came up with this one. Now I have downloaded it, and I'll put a link to both of these images below this video. But if we come up to our paper, there it is. Important thing, head up to document, come down to resize, always check this out. You'll notice, importantly, DPI, 72 pixels per inch. That won't work with our image. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this right the way up to 300 pixels per inch. Talking of pixels, unit is in pixels, changing this, clicking down. There's inches. You might have used millimeters, centimeters. Select these if you did. I'm going to go for inches. Now we can see the size. Right, let's just head over here, selecting it all. We want it to be 10 inch square. So unlocking the padlock as we come past. I'm just going to highlight this area, typing in 10 and going down to resize. When we click on resize, that looks better. Now I'm going to use Command A or Control A. That's Command A, Control A to select all of the document. Command C or Control C. That's Command C, Control C to copy it. Heading back over to this tab. Let's click on the top layer. I'm now going to use Command V or Control V to paste it in. We can't see it. Blend modes. Multiply looks pretty good. My favorite has got to be this one here, linear burn. Just going back and forth between the two. Yes, we're going to use linear burn. Now there's a few more little bits and pieces I want to change. Too much detail around the hat in this area here as well. Make sure you click on the mask. There it is. That's now highlighted it. Zooming in. Spacebar. Command Control into this area here. You can see that's way too strong. What have we got? Got 98%. I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard. So 30%. There it is. And we've got black as the foreground color. I want to reduce that repeat pattern effect in the hat as well as some of the darker lines. Speeding up the video, as you can see, just to make things a little bit faster so you don't get bored. There is our finished image. If I just switch this off, you've got it on a sketch layer, on a sketch layer, on a white background. Turning this on, you've now got it on a paper background. So go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have, and don't forget to subscribe. Plenty more videos to come. Click that little bell icon. That way you'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is Happy Imaging, and take care.